That is next week here on Top Rank Boxing. This was Ringside Report. Editor Dominic Carter should be a good one. We'll be back. It is indeed time for our main event as we're at the Pontchartrain Center, right near the Treasure Chest Casino, the boat that, uh, one of the boats here in um, New Orleans area that uh, goes out and the people gamble on it. It's a beautiful facility and uh, maybe Davey B and I will go visit it a little bit later. The WBU Light Heavyweight Championship. And uh, it will feature Frank Tate against Dominic Carter. Frank Tate, of course, the former middleweight champion his has been an interesting saga. Dave chronicles it. Frank Tate! Frank Tate has been around forever. The Detroit Light Heavyweight is working on his second decade and his third president. He held his own IBF title office until being voted out here by Michael Nunn. Tate subsequently won some primaries, notably this intercontinental crown of the IBF when he beat Uriah Grant but Tate has never come all the way back. Twice more, he sought the WBA White House, but on both occasions, it was Virgil Hill winning the hearts of the electorate and keeping the light heavyweight title. So what's the story? Does Tate still have the stomach for politics? For whose crown will he stump? Check tonight's campaign ad. My whole goal is to stay active the rest of this year. You know, this is my first fight since I lost to Virgil Hill a year ago in July. So hopefully after this, the phone will still ring. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this fight tonight. Tate has had a lot of inactivity lately. He attributes that to administrative reshuffling, and he hopes to turn everything around. A lot of people didn't know why I was on the layoff. You know, they was wondering what happened to Frank Tate. Where is Frank Tate? But only I knew and the guys that was around me knew that I was still in the gym, but not just waiting on a phone call, and I finally got it. And I hopefully, hopefully the phone is still ringing after this one. Well, he hopes the phone is ringing uh, from a good performance. That is Frank Tate, the former middleweight king who is coming in here off that long layoff. And there's Dominic Carter. What a night for him from nearby Metairie, Louisiana, a 29-year-old, very engaging young man, kind of a brawler, a tough fella. He hopes this will be his big moment. Dominic Hurricane Carter. Dominic Carter is a puzzle to boxing experts. Can he advance beyond regional stardom? He said no in a 1993 loss to Terry B. He said no again in a technical knockout defeat to Darren Zenner. Since then, he's undefeated, but only 3-0. Carter would regroup after the loss to Zenner, ponder his career options, and return after a nine-month layoff. For the year 1994, at least, the strategy worked. Carter scored two 10-round triumphs last year, including this decision over Terry Scott. He added another victory this year before knee surgery sidelined him again. Tonight, Carter tries his biggest step ever against former champion Frank Tate. And so with a crowd very much in his corner, Dominic Carter looks to all four corners of this ring in the Pontchartrain Center and receives support no matter which side he turns to. Well, how will he get the job done? The AutoZone keys to victory, Dave. Well, he must know, Al, that the first one is to get the crowd into it. They're on his side now. His big home game here, he wants them streaming. Body work, it would be body shots for anybody else, but he owns a used car shop. Body work for him. Frank Tate utilized the jab. That's his calling card. Conserve stamina. He's in his 30s now. Don't go three minutes of every round. Save some. In the WBO, no three knockdowns, no standing eight count. Only the referee can stop it. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And the accidental butt rule, a fight must be more than halfway to go to the scorecards. Less than that, it's a technical draw. So that would be six rounds here. All right, so all that having been said, we are set to go. 
Dominic Carter and Frank Tate. In the center of the ring, it's Bobby Stevens. Ladies and gentlemen, our main event, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBU Light Heavyweight Championship. The judges tonight, Elmo Adolph, Paul Sita, and Mark Skilbred. Representing the WBU, the supervisor, Bob Bello. Introducing first, in the red corner, from Detroit, Michigan. Wearing the red trunks, white trunks, black and white trunks. Weighing 174 pounds with a record of 34 wins, four losses, 20 by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Frank Tate. Yeah. Tate. And in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks, the red and green Italian colors, from Metairie, Louisiana, weighing in at 174 pounds, with a record of 20 wins, three losses, 10 by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the Hurricane, Dominic Cotta. Cotta, your referee for this bout. Martin Cosino, our main event. Come on, Frank. Good evening, gentlemen. You received your instructions earlier. I want to obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times, okay? Shut them up. Very emphatic by Frank Tate. He's pumped up for this fight after a 15-month layoff. He is anxious to get back in it. He said, I love this game, and I'm glad I'm there. And if he's pumped up, what about Dominic Carter across the way? A 29-year-old who has lots of people rooting him on here. Certainly the biggest fight he has ever been in in his professional life, and he feels this is his ticket to moving up in the middleweight division. And by the way, Martin Casino is the third man in the ring. Those of you that remember, remember Frank Tate from his middleweight days, and maybe chronicled that quite well in that uh, feature. He has been a light heavyweight for the last couple of years. Also fought Virgil Hill twice for that title. He is a man who doesn't actually look that being out of proportion as a light heavyweight, Dave. Yeah, he almost gives the impression that if he had to go down, he could to another, you know, where there could be some money in some other weight classes, even shift up if he had to. He's very flexible that way. He is very good with his jab, and somebody jabbers, and you maintain that skill, and carry your career a long way. You can come in off long layoffs, and that's hoping, in his case, what he can do. Dominic Carter comes in here on a three-fight winning streak, but he's not been that active himself. He only had two fights in 94 and is at one here in 95. He had a, a knee surgery, which uh, Dave alluded to, on his, uh, on his uh, right knee. Got out some stomach surgery. He slipped on a floor in a restaurant. So he was off for some months. He said he was in and out of the hospital the same day with the modern medical technology the way it is. He needs Frank Tate to come down a level if he's going to win this fight. He hopes that at 31 with the layoff, Frank might not be as sharp as on some other occasions. If you were going to take down a Frank Tate, this would be the time, this would be the fight. You mentioned Bobby Stevens, our ring announcer, his uncle, uh, Kathy Dalton, is in a very, very ill in a hospital in Massachusetts, and we want to send our best wishes to him and hope that he gets well. Just over a minute left to go here in round one. At the Poncho Train Center in Kenner, Louisiana, outside New Orleans. Charger Chess Casino, our host for this evening. And both fighters displaying the need to establish their jab. It has been a jab a thought in the opening round, both understanding the importance of what that can mean later for them. The jab gets in by Carter. Both men are, as Dave said, being a little tentative here in round one. There has been almost nothing thrown but jabs in this first round. 
Triple A has been an easy uh, round for Martin Casino. Unlike poor Terry Wood, who was joined us late in the, the uh, fight between Butterbean and Pat Jackson, got nailed with a uh, huge right hand. We should get some kind of bonus. <laughs> Round one passes into the night. Well, if you Keenan definitely is big on the mind games. Always has been. Over the top with that right hand. Rough him up on the inside. Don't let him don't let him handle you on the inside. You handle him. That's your spot. Okay? When you get in there, out hustle him with the punch. Okay, we look good. Sit down to the bell ring. Dominic Carter as he looks across at Frank Tate. We head into round two. It is scheduled for 12. Dominic Carter in the white trunks, the 29-year-old from nearby Metairie, Louisiana, and Frank Tate from Detroit, Michigan, the 31-year-old former champion. As you look at the number of jabs in round one, that's almost all they threw. Predominant weapon, only seven non-jabs thrown by each fighter. Well, they were really into the jab. Most times we see fighters who don't throw the jab enough. That's right. Not so this evening. And you can always switch off the jab and start throwing it a little bit less. It's harder to get it going when you're not jabbing at all. Carter is by nature a little bit more of a brawler. He's a stand-up fighter, but he likes it when things heat up, and we've seen him sometimes throw some wide punches, which is something that will get him in trouble against Tate. And he may have to try and do that, which would be to his detriment, because Tate is tall here. He's got two tall fighters. His punches have to go a great distance. He'll be shooting it over the top. The interesting thing is neither man is a great inside fighter, even in his heyday when Tate was a champion, doing so well in the middleweight division. Inside fighting was never his forte. He won the title back in 1987 against Michael Lazarde in a terrific 15-round fight in which he was a, a vacant title. Defended it against Tony Simpson. And then ran into Michael Nunn in 1988 and lost to him. Also lost the bid for the super middleweight title and then a couple of shots at the light heavyweight. And most fighters who were in their prime during that time have gone well on to the next career by now. That's true. He is still here and maintaining a good degree of the motor skills that have brought him to that level. And at 31 years of age, not, not ancient. And the early start has enabled him to propel here, and he believes the time off helped him recharge and retool, which, if you're in shape, can be a good asset. Overhead right, and also, Frank Tate doesn't blow up in between fights. He's always fought right at the whatever weight category he's in, whether it's middleweight or light heavyweight. He'll no fight right around there. He doesn't blow up to a lot of big weight in between. We're in round two, about a half minute left to go. It has been a chess match so far. Tate looking a little rusty, which you would expect after a 15 month layoff. But Carter not able to explode on him here. Tate landing the overhand right. So round two is through. And we'll see what round three has to offer. Well, where did this come from? Dominic Carter has a nasty cut in the island area. Very dangerous there. You see the work between rounds. And you did not see that a butt had been called, and if so, that's a tough non-call for Carter because he could be a TKO victim. Or it may have come from a punch, we don't know. 37-16, a big edge there for Tate. And Tate certainly has something to shoot at, and Carter really prematurely is in a bit of a desperate situation, and he has to open up. He may have to, because that cut is in such a bad spot right on the lid. That can come apart, that can get very bad, very quickly can go into the eye. So Dominic Carter's plan may have to go by the boards. And when you're facing a fighter like Frank Tate, who is so good with the jab, it's a big problem in your cut. And Carter's spending a lot of time on the outside now. They're holding it inside, and they are hitting each other in the back of the head. And 
And Frank Tate, not a happy camper. He thinks that in the last round, Dominic Carter initiated this, and he gave him a stare as they were walking back to the corner. And we've seen some a little hot-blooded as far as Dominic Carter and his guys are. We've seen him getting some uh, wild affairs after fights were over and in between rounds. So beware of that. Chris could be a strange night anyway. We've already seen a referee knocked out. And we're dealing with an emotional sport to begin with and a hometown hero who has a very big hill to climb here. Big right by Frank Tate. You know, that goes badly for Carter, that shot. Yeah, if Tate's landing that lead right hand, it's not a good sign. He's drawing a beat on it. Now he's getting hit behind the head, Frank Tate. And Dominic Carter, that's an illegal punch, and Martin Casino is, is warning him about it, and rightfully so. You can't throw punches there. You're not supposed to, anyway. And that's two warnings in this round, and there's a Tate head butt that gets in that wasn't called. Well, Frank Tate says, hey, you're going to keep doing that to me. I'm going to use what's at my disposal. And he got away with it. He, yeah. he knew how to throw the head butt while the referee was screened. So many sports we see, it's always the retaliation that gets called. Nice hook by Tate. Frank Tate is starting to pick up the beat here, and Carter on the outside is having all kinds of trouble. And Tate is sitting down on his punches here. He's also a little bit mad, and there's the left hook coming in. He is raising, but he's just a little closer. You feel like Frank Tate has this look in his eye, like, I want to end this. I want to go after him right now and get him out of here. So hostilities have erupted here in the third round. The only place John, uh, Tate is not visited is downstairs. Not too much body work there. So round three provides us with some fireworks and we'll see if Frank Tate continues the assault in round four. We look here on ESPN 630 Pacific. Some of the best amateur fighters in the world, my buddy Dave Bontemple will be down there with our friend Gus Johnson. And uh, you're gonna have fun down there. We'll have fun, sorry we'll miss you. I won't be there in Macon, Georgia, but I will be watching on Sunday when that show airs on ESPN2. More than 140 countries represented there, and Tate with a huge edge there in the third round and punches landed Carter has to step it up. Dominic Carter coming out a little bit more aggressively. He's had two months to prepare for this fight. He told us today he really thought that he was ready. We asked him, what, is he, what are you going to do in there? And he said, anything to aggravate Frank Tate. Unfortunately, he aggravated him with those, those illegal blows. Uh, he certainly has with the illegal blows. And on the scorecards, he would be aggravated himself. He has the two months to get ready. But the problem for Carter here is not only Tate's speed, but the fact both fighters are tall, they all set one another, so Carter is not able to find his right hand in this fight, whereas Tate has been able to find his. There's the wide looping punch that Carter is known for from time to time. And that's a gambling motif. If he starts getting into that, that means he cannot get to Tate the conventional way. Carter trying to jab his weight, even though Carter has, is about the same height, maybe even a little taller than Tate, he still doesn't seem to be able to get that jab in straight right hand, or is the jab? Excuse me, Dominic, you did get it in. We're in round four, halfway mark of this round, it is scheduled for 12. Dominic Carter in the white trunks, and the white and black, it is Frank Tate. I'm Al Bernstein, along with Dave Von Tempo, here from the Country Train Center in Kenner, Louisiana. Well, we've been waiting to see who's going to go off the jabbing style first. Tate landed his right hands in the last round and looked to be coming off it. Now they're both back jabbing again. Carter should at least show the right hand, even if he's not going to throw it too much. Under a minute left to go here in round four. Both men now back in the jabbing mode, as they've said. You can tell the experience differential here thus far with Tate not taking as much time to reload. Carter is taking a lot of time to set up his punches after he's driven off. Frank Tate is now self-managed. His last fight was in July of 94 against Virgil Hill. He lost for the WBA fight heavyweight title. Since then, he has been in a battle, legal battle over management, and that's uh, kept him out of the ring, and that is why he is self-managed now. And 
Tonight he finds himself with his fate in his own hands, though, against Dominic Carter. So far, he's doing pretty good. We'll be back for round five here in Louisiana. After the bell, Carter with a shot, Tate with a shot, the lacing. It's been sort of a uh, get him where you can kind of a fight. We had him in round five. That was a clinic on things you're not supposed to do. First with the hitting behind the head, the lacing, the using of the head. It was only about two or three illegal things that weren't used there. Unfortunately, some trainers would say, well, you should do it because you didn't get caught. That's probably true. We're in round six. Or round five, excuse me. And those punches through round four. Tate with a good statistical advantage there. And little power shots, only nine by Tate and five by Carter in the fourth round. So the jab is continuing to be the predominant weapon. So round five, it is scheduled for 12. Frank Tate and the striped trunks and the black and white striped trunks and the Dominic Carter in the white. See the knee brace on Carter, and that's because he had arthroscopic surgery on his right knee, but he says it's all healed now, but we've seen him wear that brace even before he had the surgery. Dominic himself would like to get a win here and maybe get a shot at Virgil Hill, or he talked about Henry Mask, the East German light heavyweight champion. Just to get there, all he has to do is get Frank Tate out of the boxing mode and out punch him. That's all, huh? <laughs> Just those two little things standing between him and the title fight. And unfortunately for him, he has caught a Frank Tate that's been pretty much on and hasn't gone down to that level we talked about. Martin Casino is warning Dominic Carter about hitting behind the head against Tate. Uppercut from the outside by Frank Tate. Tate was a great amateur champion and came into the pros and did win that light, that uh, middleweight crown. Never did get the light heavyweight title, though he had a couple of chances against Virgil Hill. Also fought Lindell Holmes for the super middleweight title. That was a fight I really thought he was going to win. Not that Lindell Holmes isn't a good fighter, but Tate seemed to have the style to beat Lindell Holmes. Couldn't get it done. And one of those rare fights where you look at it and say, well, a guy didn't rise to the level he's capable of. It happens now and then. And he didn't get his title fight. He didn't get his title. So under a half minute here in round five. It is scheduled for 12. It has been a uh, tactical fight. Men, both men using the jab, occasional straight right hand. There's Tate with one of his rare left hooks. And as Dave pointed out, Almost no body punching during the course of this fight. We'll be back for round six. This time I know it's round six. Stay with us. Ten by Carter here, and Tate just missing with a big right hand. Does get a grazing shot on the forehead. That's really this fight in microcosm, isn't it? Except the only thing missing was Frank Tate's jab, which has maybe been the, the other punch. We're in the round six of the schedule for 12, Frank Tate the right of your screen and Dominic Carter on the left and what anemic numbers for Carter yeah, this is your hometown fight you really want to get everything exploding here you only throw 29 and Tate throwing reasonable numbers for him about where he was in his previous days but uh, Carter can't win with 29 punches around so Dominic Carter 20 and 3 coming in as 29 year old there's a good right hand by Carter he's got the 10 KOs he's not a huge knockout puncher Tate 34 and 4 with 20 KOs. If you're in there with a very good jabber, as Carter is, and you let him establish that, the fighter can stay behind that jab like he's on cruise control the entire night. That's a weapon that has to be taken away. If the jab won't do it, he's got to cover up, bob and weave, and fire to the body here. That's what he's not doing. The other way to beat a jabber is jab yourself. Double jab on the way in, and that nullifies the other guy's jab. Good left hook by Dominic Carter. The ultimate jabber in the last three, four decades was Muhammad Ali, and some of the people that nullified his jab were Kenny Norman and Jimmy Young by using their own jab. We watched a super about the other night, you and I, uh, George Chevalier in the second fight against Ali. It's funny how time dims your memory. What an impressive effort by George Chevalier in that fight. He was excellent even in losing to Ali. He was gutsy. He was right in front of Muhammad Ali. 
and gave him a very good test. And, you know, today he would do pretty well if he was out here. Boy, wouldn't he ever. I can think of a lot of heavyweights that he would be, we tend to forget. Well, Frank Tate right now is doing pretty well, and he just landed a good right hand against Dominic Carter. Somewhere George Chevalier, we're on him, Kelly. He, he's listening. Hey, George, you did good. About Muhammad Ali being interviewed before the fight was over by five people. <laughs> before the decision, even he's standing there and they're interviewing him. Up, under a minute left to go here in round six. And there again, Tate, from memory alone, can get that jab out there and decide every close round with that. It's a really a very good point. It's the, it's the equalizer and it's the difference here. Under a half minute left to go in round six. Well, we had a wild fight to kick things off. Pedro Saiz loses to Isaac Cruz by knockout. The fourth round, it was a wild affair. This one, a more tactical fight. Good right hand by Tate. And he's starting to find the range with that punch. Frank Tate distressed at uh, the head usage by Dominic Carter. Not been happy with the tactics of Carter. And his cornermen not happy either. And they got those uh, those shirts on. It looks like they can call a foul. You can't win the fight, then you're gonna try and foul, yeah. How about if Dave's bought his own keys to victory? Has not gotten them into a frenzy. The body work, where has it been? That's why he's losing this fight. Frank Tate very much utilizing the jab. He's dominating the fight with that and hasn't opened himself up too much. He's 31. He's conserving the stamina very well. He is following the keys. So you see, if you pay attention to the keys to victory at the beginning of every fight that Dave gives you, you'll know exactly what's going to happen. There's some heads coming together, and Carter with... He's doubly emphasizing to the referee, yes, I did headbutt him. <laughs> <laughs> and I meant it. In case you missed it. So there. Stamina. All right. It's round seven. Or Ollie, excuse me. Had my wrong Laurel and Hardy guy there. We're headed into the seventh round. Frank Tate, the left of your screen against Dominic Carter. It has been, while not a wild brawl, kind of an interesting tactical fair, and we've seen some extracurricular activity of interest. And Tate doing what he has to here, dominating with that jab, holding Carter in the last round to 10 punches landed, and that's a handful of rounds in this fight in which Carter has landed anemic numbers, barely getting into double digits. Tate only landed 21 punches in that round and won it easily. And the interesting thing is that even though Frank Kidd is doing exactly what you suggested, the keys, etc., he still isn't happy landing 33% of his jabs, though. In other fights that will not serve him very well. He's never really been a high percentage fighter, but he does show the jab more than other fighters do and get it in there so it maintains the weapon and ends up being some good defense for him as well. And Tate cruising in my estimation here. And in fact, Frank Tate normally has landed by in, in a composite of some of his fights, 26% of his jab. So actually, he normally doesn't land that many, but he uses it as a good weapon to keep fighters off. Keeps it off and improves his defensive numbers, and it's a good flow for him. It keeps him moving forward, and it keeps him in position to throw the right hand when it's there. We're in round seven, halfway through the seventh round of his schedule for 12. Very nice crowd here on hand at the Ponchi Train Center, and uh, we've been a little muted during this fight, but uh, they're very excited in the Saiz Cruz fight, and they loved Butterbean, even though his opponent didn't offer too much, Pat Jackson. And they came ready to root for Dominic Carter here, but uh, unfortunately he has not been able to really get things going against Tate. Tate has blunted Carter, and Carter has blunted himself. At some point, Carter has to make a decision whether he wants to just stay in the fight to hang around, or does he want to gamble, risk being knocked out, hoping he can do something to Tate here. He must open up. We're going to be back here in New Orleans next uh, week on November 3rd, which is a uh, Friday. And uh, on the next day, we're going to be at ringside at the Bo Holy side of the Bo Holyfield fight, where we will be doing a special. We're going to take a look back at the Lewis, Lewis Morrison fight at the 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern time, and look at some of the other doings in the heavyweight division. Tate going after.
after Carter with uh, a right hand. And Dominic Carter <laughs> won't take his hand away from the head of tape. Well, you can feel what's going on here. There's going to be an eruption of feelings. It just, it's going to happen, folks. Somewhere along the line, somebody's going to get into some extracurricular activity. And I don't think it's going to be Dave and I, though. If they want this fight to get more action, they should tell both guys it's three minutes of every round. Well, lots of action in college football. That's for crunch games in college football. It's Dominic Carter in his corner. So, we continue on here. It is for the WBU light heavyweight title. It is not a uh, one of the titles recognized as a really major title. But it's a stepping stone of sort. And again, Carter barely getting into double figures. That's 10, 10 and 13 in his last three rounds. Cannot win fights that way. Tate has thrown 302 jabs. Carter has thrown 232 punches. Wow. So a lot of inactivity by Carter here. There is uh, blood now underneath the right eye of Carter, a gash, a little swelling. So Leslie Bonanno, his manager, in the last round, giving him uh, some stern words. I'm sure he's saying, you've got to be very aggressive here. This is your opportunity. You've got to try and go make something happen. I think Carter has found out that this matchup of the jabs has been not very beneficial for him. Tate has been very good. Strategically, it doesn't fit Carter well to try to get into a jamming battle. He must gamble and come forward. And what's happening is he's getting frozen here. He wanted to use the jab more. It got taken away. And his fight plan is gone. There is the jab of Tate. Now he's hitting blood every time he throws the jab. It's under the eye. And it's getting uglier and uglier for Carter. Could be a situation. And there is a slight cut on the eyelid over the right eye as well. Tate has been very precise in what he's done here. Not taking a lot of chances, Frank Tate. There's an overhand right that just missed. And he really didn't have to take too many chances, did he? And that is indicative in the numbers we talked about earlier about his low percentage. He just keeps throwing the jab out there. That's the extent of his offense. Not taking too many chances, not always landing with the jab, but it is keeping the defense off. Now, if Tate should win here tonight, very soon he may well be fighting James Tony. There's a lot of talk about him uh, fighting Tony as a light heavyweight. And he'd love to get Roy Jones Jr. in the ring. His brother Thomas lost to Roy Jones Jr. And he was in uh, at the weigh-in this morning chatting with us and saying he's going to get back in action real soon. He's fighting, I think, on November 21st. And Tate's starting to sit down on his punches more now and feeling it. It's been a very good round for Frank Tate. And there you see why. The right hand getting in. Big power punches. Carter may be hurt. Big time. This hurt. fight is over. Frank Tate is back. And he's a happy man. And that's the way to win the fight for him. On top, on top. And when he's zeroed in on the right hand, he unleashed everything. The crowd is unhappy, thinking it was premature, but Carter was way behind anyway. And he had just begun to sustain a considerable serious damage throughout this entire round. And it was going to get worse as time went on. And his corner, Leslie Bonanno's manager, was already up on the ring apron. Something that you're not going to see when you're in row 17. Now there's Frank Tate. Good for him. He came over, and there, there were a few tense moments there, and he put his arms around Dominic Carter and hugged him. Good for you, Frank Tate. You're a good sport in a fight that didn't indicate they would be good sports afterward. And in a fight in which the people are booing you because you're the visiting right. fighter. Show some class. He, 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 Frank Tate is a classy guy, and he's showing it tonight. Now, as Frank Tate celebrates, as well he should, a very nice performance, I think we can safely say not that much ring rust on him after 50-month layoff. No, he came back, 
Won the majority of the rounds. Did it the way he's used to doing it. Now he's opening up with the big right hands here. Carter is a target. Hands are down. Now, when Tate opens up, this could be Carter's fight if he's on. He's not on. Referee comes in. Hey, better a little bit too soon than too late. And the corner was coming in at the same time. Very appropriate. And Frank Tate knows he maximized that punching sequence. Now, I would criticize that stoppage, but for one, of, one thing. His manager was already up on the ring apron. He would have been disqualified in another 20 seconds anyway. You look at Frank Tate, there are the total numbers. Now, he kept Carter to 10 punches landed around. And Tate with low percentage, but the high number showing you how his jab kept him off there. And the jabs, a tremendous advantage for Tate. We said it would be a key for him. He can do this in his sleep. All right, Bobby Stevens is up in the center of the ring. If we can find him, there he is. Let's get the end. No. The two minutes and 44 seconds of the eighth round. The referee stops the bout. The winner by a technical knockout and new WBU light heavyweight champion, Frank Tate. Tate. So Frank Tate gets the win. He is back after a 15-month layoff and performed very, very well. He gets his 35th win as a professional, and Dave Von Temple will have a chance to talk with him right after this. And it all caught up with him there as Martin Casino went, came in to stop it. That's Frank Tate. He's the victor. He's with Dave Von Temple right now. Okay, thanks, Al. Frank, has your jab ever been better? No, sir. Thanks to the tutelage of Willie Haynes, Eric Williams, and the sparring partners back in Houston, Texas, Lou Savaris, Abdeen Muhammad, Dan Mack. They all helped me get ready for this fight and um, it is show tonight. Now, you kept him to about 10 punches landed per round. How did you do that? Well, I've been working on a whole lot of new things. I have a new trainer. My thing is I know how to fight. I just need somebody to push me. And the thing, the rap about Frank Tate is that he's lazy. But I showed I wasn't lazy. I was off a year and a couple of months. But you know what? I'll be back. Just keep me busy. Okay, Frank, we look for a top 10 fight for you pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Let's take it back to Al Bernstein. One more thing. Frank Tate, a happy man. He gets his win and uh, he certainly pushed himself tonight and performed very, very well. We got more boxing for you, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Well, this would be your bonus coverage here on Top Rank Boxing. Couple of welterweights as the uh, crowd here at the Pontchartrain Center settles down from that win of Frank Tate. The strains of Mexican music as Abraham Martinez comes into the ring and uh, makes it kind of festive here. He's going to be taking on Ronald Weaver. An undefeated fighter from New Orleans. Abraham uh, Martinez is from Mexico City. And uh, that's Jay Edson to the left there. He's our site coordinator. You know what? Jay was saying there was a super bot on recently where he where he refereed against, uh, he refereed in one of Muhammad Ali's fights. There's Jay. He uh, refereed, he was a great referee. There you go, Jay, wave to the folks. We love it. He, uh, he refereed, I think, something like 50 or 60 uh, championship fights, and uh, one of the best referees uh, in boxing for many years. Ali Berbick with the uh, the cowbell. He can improvise better than just about anybody in this industry. He did indeed. Now, 